With WrestleMania 40 just around the corner, there's no better time than to turn to you, the loyal IGN reader for an honest to goodness, greatest wrestler of all time rundown. With voting results taken a few weeks ago ahead of the WWE 2K24 launch using an IGN face-off that allowed y'all to vote for your favorite wrestling legends, a top 25 list was born. It was an elimination process that took into account wrestlers from all eras, grapplers and all styles of the art. So if you're looking for Brahma Bulls, Texas Rattlesnakes, Vipers, Tribal Chiefs, cerebral assassins and heartbreak kids, oh. and you've come to the right spot. We've got one of each of those. Here is who you, the IGN readers, voted for as the greatest wrestlers of all time. Oh, and if you're just gonna write wrestling is fake in the comments, I, I want you to hear me real quick. Just know this, like, know it in your heart. Your mom is fake. Your fucking mom is fake. Quite simply, one of the greatest loudmouth heels ever to step foot in the ring was the universally adored Rowdy Roddy Piper. A chaotic, clever brawler who could verbally run circles around his opponents, Piper was crucial to the 80s wrestling boom. Whether he was starting shit in his interview segment, Piper's Pit, headlining the first ever WrestleMania, or transitioning into the type of hero who could take on a heel Hulk Hogan in WCW, Piper was always entertaining, earnest, and electrifying. And fucking so good in They Live. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. AJ Styles is what he says he is. Phenomenal. His work in the NWA Ring of Honor and TNA helped create a landscape of unprecedented athleticism in pro wrestling. Incapable of having a bad match with anyone, Styles was able to transfer his high-flying daredevilry to the WWE, where he found immediate acceptance from a large, smart fan base excited for his main roster debut. And then staggering success as a WWE World Champion, heel or hero, Styles is a bona fide must-watch. After a decade of witnessing game-changing athleticism in Ring of Honor and on the independent scene, fans were finally hungry for something different, be it CM Punk or wrestling nerd extraordinaire Daniel Bryan. He's gonna fly! Yeah! Missile drop kick, car block, good! A pure example of a man not seeking greatness, but instead having greatness thrust upon him, Bryan rose up through the WWE ranks as unlikely as that was and became everyone favorite performer. So much so that a full fan-led movement in 2014 pushed this exemplary athlete into one of the biggest WrestleMania wins of all time. Brian, now wrestling with his real name, Brian Danielson in AEW, never wanted to be the top guy as much as we wanted him and still want him to be. He just wanted to have a healthy, successful career as a pro wrestler, and that's what he battled his way out of early forced retirement for. Not for world title glory, but for the actual win or lose art of wrestling. Relatively speaking, Cody Rhodes is a newcomer to best wrestler lists, having just rose up over the last five years as a ferocious force to be reckoned with. No one has taken more risks with his career than Cody, as the son of an outright legend, no less. Quitting WWE to bet on himself, knowing his own worth, Rhodes traveled the world from promotion to promotion, building back up the credibility that had been all but blotted out under Vince McMahon. Then came All In, and soon after AEW, where he co-founded the first true competitive wrestling promotion for WWE. WWE in two decades. Returning to WWE, exponentially more popular than when he left, Cody has been the big dog for years now. Even with champ Roman Reigns constantly in his sights, he's the most popular babyface in WWE, even with that neck tattoo, which is really saying something. I mean, you know that love is genuine. It's an awful neck tattoo. That's much further down the list. 30s, 40s maybe. No one got time for that kind of list. A true double-edged sword of the wrestling industry, CM Punk is a significantly polarizing figure. The first to admit that he himself can be his own worst enemy, Punk's hardcore punk mentality won't allow him to play nice with others when he feels his stringent ideals are being compromised. And considering how much he made himself relevant and shattered glass ceilings on his own with his pipe bomb speech back in 2011, But the fact that Dwayne is in the main event of WrestleMania next year and I'm not makes me sick. He's got every reason to put his faith in himself. After an incredible stint in Ring of Honor, his blood loss almost caused Punk to black out. Pepsi twist! 
the era of punk in WWE still remains one of the most exciting times in the business, and one that brought a lot of people back to the product. A spectacularly talented straight edge quipster whose AEW resurrection ended in controversy <laughs> both times. Punk still holds fans in the palm of his hand whenever he makes an appearance. A true pioneer of not only the cruiserweight division, but also of the Lucha Libre style in America, Rey Mysterio is one of the few little guys to make it to the big time. And by big time, we mean being a three-time world champion in WWE, as well as a Hall of Famer. Rey has always been a vibrant, energetic hero who fans of all ages can enjoy. From Kane to The Big Show, Rey can have epic matches with giants while also delivering showstoppers like he did with Eddie Guerrero, Chris Jericho, and Dean Malenko in WCW. Rey has even gone the extra mile and gifted us with the conniving, devious Dominic Mysterio, who we watched grow up before our eyes from an innocent lad into one of the slimiest heels around. Remembered fondly and largely as the eighth wonder of the world, Andre the Giant was the biggest and best wrestling attraction in history. And it's crazy that his most famous moments came toward the tail end of his career when he was struggling with so much pain he could barely move. Before the body slam heard round the world at WrestleMania 3, Andre had never been pinned during his previous 15 years in the WWF. And only against Andre could the six foot seven Hulk Hogan be considered the David in this David and Goliath story. One of the most lovable monsters in wrestling history, Andre was one of the rare titans who could physically dominate anyone who stepped through the ropes. Feared by some, cherished by all, Andre was a living legend in his own time. That was very, very close. Hogan may be injured. Oh, and Andre's Andre going to work on the back. It's hard to believe, given Roman Reigns' current historic title run and powerful tribal chief mafioso gimmick, that there was a time not too long ago that the head of the table was public enemy number one for a large swath of wrestling fans. Reigns was pushed too quickly up the ladder and rushed into the main event scene, causing many to reject him as the new face of WWE, which then turned his clumsy babyface era into a bit of a shit show. Now though, Reigns has more than found his footing as WWE's guy to beat. Even though Triple H was the first heel champ to ever retain at WrestleMania, Reigns has now won his last three manias, managing to pin both Edge and Daniel Bryan at the same time, while also defeating heavy finish the story favorite Cody Rhodes. When Adam Copeland, aka Edge, hung up his boots in April 2011, he was able to look out at a capacity crowd who unanimously saw him as a living legend, despite having portrayed one of the most despicable heels in wrestling history. Now, after watching the rated R superstar return from what was supposed to be a career-ending injury, even following him to AEW where he'll most likely wrestle for the remainder of his career, fans can honestly say, we think we know him. Edge has a passion and mind for wrestling like no other, and his battles with Cena, Undertaker, Mick Foley, and Kurt Angle rank among the industry's best. And even before he became a Hall of Fame singles performer, he helped revolutionize tag team and hardcore wrestling with groundbreaking outings in the first ever TLC matches. Mick Foley is the most cuddly masochist of all time. Think Santa Claus, a personal hero of Foley's, but instead of a sack of gifts, he's carrying a barbed wire baseball bat. An another hero of Foley's. Look, even if Foley hadn't plummeted 16 feet off the top of a steel cage and through an announce table, he'd still be a legend. But as it turns out, he did. So he's a double legend, triple legend, if you also count being down an ear. Wrestlers put their bodies on the line every time they step into the ring, but some go that extra mile and put their lives on the line. Now, to be clear, we don't ask them to. Foley, though, capitalized off the curtain dropping on the business during the Attitude Era, entertaining millions with three different gimmicks, the deranged mankind, the dancing dude love, and the hardcore Cactus Jack. Whether he was shoving his sock-covered hand in people's mouths or falling through flaming tables, Foley's main goal was to entertain the crowd using any and everything at his disposal.
From Mexico to Japan to ECW to WCW to WWE to now AEW, Chris Jericho has been wrestling at a marquee level for 34 years. AEW cohort Dustin Rhodes hasn't beat with 36 years, but Jericho still wrestles weekly against top competition. He's no part-timer. Exceptionally talented in all aspects of the business, from the mic to the mat, Jericho has kept himself uniquely interesting by reinventing himself every few years. Whether he's the Lionheart, the man of a thousand and four holds, Y2J, the best in the world at what he does, you just made the list Jericho, the pain maker, or le champion, Jericho is an innovator in the ring and out. It's hard to believe that this popular third gen veteran was once the youngest world heavyweight champion in history, but apex predator Randy Orton, a WWE lifer, has managed to turn his cold, calculating persona and occasionally plotting wrestling style into gold. Not only does the Viper have multiple world championships and legendary feuds with Triple H, John Cena, and The Undertaker under his belt, but his RKO finisher still gets one of the biggest pops around. A move that can be hit out of nowhere, and creatively so. The RKO, like the stunner before it, is guaranteed whenever Orton hears the voices in his head. Gone too soon from acute heart failure at age 38, Eddie Guerrero was a brilliant expert performer who worked Japan, Mexico, ECW, WCW, and the WWE, capturing the hearts and minds of audiences wherever he wrestled. The youngest and most successful of the legendary Guerrero brothers, Latino Heat, lied, cheated, and stole his way into our hearts, eventually cementing his legacy by defeating Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship in one of the greatest underdog matches of all time. A hero and inspiration to Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet, and countless others, Eddie was a one-of-a-kind talent who'd sadly only scratched the surface of his career when he passed. Viva la raza. We miss you, Eddie. Macho Man Randy Savage, with his stringy hair, giant sunglasses, bandanas, bedazzled jackets and robes, and insane voice, is one of the most instantly recognizable and magnetic performers the wrestling world had ever seen. And let me point to the president of the World Wrestling Federation, the Macho Man Randy Savage is not happy with your decision. Savage was a timelessly off-kilter character whose look, matches, and promos transcended the industry, and with the lovely Miss Elizabeth at his side, he was also part of wrestling's premier power couple. As an athlete, Savage's aerial arsenal and flying elbow drops still influence wrestlers today. Once one half of the mega powers, Savage's WrestleManias were next level. Whether he was winning the title from Ric Flair, losing the title to Hulk Hogan, or putting on a clinic with Ricky Steamboat. In control once again in this matchup. A reversal, another reversal. Oh, inadvertently rammed right into the referee. This freaking Olympic gold medalist took to the business faster than any other outsider had before him, quickly becoming the biggest, most exciting talent in WWE. Kurt Angle is one of the most technically sound pro wrestlers ever to lace up. He could do it all, from astonishing matches with the likes of HBK and Brock Lesnar to some of the funniest backstage comedy bits in history. Hey guys, how's this look? I feel like a real cowboy. Angle could fill any role and shine brighter than the rest. The original mayor of Suplex City, Angle could work as a killer or a clown, and his ankle lock, including the imaginative ways he could slap it on, stands as one of the best submission holds ever. There's no one we'd rather ironically scream you suck at while his entrance theme plays. The hero of the 80s and the villain of the 90s, Hulk Hogan's history in the business is undeniable. Without Hogan, wrestling would never have soared in popularity and pop culture crossover appeal during two crucial booms for the industry. First, he captured a Rambo-loving nation's hearts and minds with Hulkamania and a prayers vitamin superhero persona. Then he led the NWO as wrestling's main bad guy into an era of cool heels, forever making it more difficult to be a babyface and a pure heel for that matter. Hogan, for good reason, is not a welcome presence these days, but for 20 years, he was the most recognized wrestler in the world, and his previous mass acceptance and enormous popularity birthed WrestleMania, the wrestling pay-per-view, and the very idea of wrestling merch selling like hotcakes. 
Having just retired from the game at age 65 after a few death-defying years in AEW as Darby Allin's cool goth uncle, the icon Sting is one of the few guys on this list who wasn't a WWE guy. Not that he didn't have a later in life WWE run, complete with a marquee mania match, but it wasn't all that great and it easily takes a big fat backseat to his work in WCW, TNA, and AEW. Many of the wrestlers on this list are here because they managed to make themselves relevant for decades, and Sting is one of the few who was able to radically shift his gimmick from buff, bleach blonde Venice Beach surfer to brooding mall goth crow-like Avenger, which allowed him to become the hero WCW needed when the NWO storyline was running roughshod over most everyone's enjoyment. Sting forged his own path, and his battles against Flair and the Four Horsemen, the Great Muda, Cactus Jack, Rick Rude, Jake Roberts, Vader, and Lex Luger represent the best of WCW. Triple H was always respected as a wrestler, having worked his way up from being WCW's Jean-Paul Levesque and the WWF's Hunter Hogpen match Helmsley to the leader of D-Generation X to shattering the main event scene as the game. As a devilish, cerebral assassin heel or as a badass babyface, Hunter easily delivered a Hall of Fame career full of accolades, titles, and memorable moments. But it was his work in NXT last decade, his mind for the business and booking that really showed everyone his true self. For the first time, with the soaring success of NXT, fans saw someone who could lead WWE into the future. Someone who was as big of a fan of wrestling as we were and knew how to spot talent, no matter their look or style. He was formidable as a performer, but he's even better as a mentor. Let's go Cena! Cena sucks! In 2005, John Cena became the WWE franchise player. One of the most hardworking and incredibly gifted performers the company has ever seen, Cena rode a polarizing wave through his career, determined to be a bright, inspirational, golden era style light in the edgelord darkness that remained after the Attitude Era, and still persisted in a big way through the Ruthless Aggression Era. It's strange to think that someone so criticized for his ring work could have absolutely epic encounters with HBK, Punk, Orton, Edge, Jericho, Triple H, AJ Styles, and The Rock. It's almost as if, you know, he's actually magnificently talented. Known for his super strength and superhuman recovery time from injury, Cena has now found a strong footing in Hollywood after being allowed to do comedy, which only wrestling fans were aware was his superior skill set. Even today, in sporadic appearances, Cena is WWE's unflinching, uncompromising hero. To many fans and wrestlers alike, Nature Boy Ric Flair is professional wrestling. This limousine riding, jet flying, kiss stealing, wheel and dealing son of a gun was the embodiment of rich guy privilege and heel bravado for decades, with promos and custom suits sharp enough to cut glass. Now it's Ric Flair and y'all pay homage to the man. Woo! Flair was the measuring stick, and for decades he was arguably the best wrestler alive or dead. Borrowing Buddy Rogers' packaged gimmick, robes, hair, figure four, leg like, and all, Flair perfected the art of the wealthy playboy villain and popularized the concept of the cool heel wrestling stable with the four horsemen. He was the top technician, cheater, and bleeder in the game, and it's hard to find a single wrestler out there who doesn't say that he was one of, if not the best, of all time. You gotta face Ric Flair one more time! After Bret Hart beat Ric Flair for the WWE Championship in 1992, the entire industry shifted, resetting the WWF back to the days of technical wizardry, while also reshaping all of our notions and expectations of what a great wrestling match could actually look and feel like. Big monsters were out. Smaller guys, who were actually still quite large, were in. You didn't need to be great on the mic, just a righteous ring general with a hundred moves at your disposal. It's hard to think about the hitman without also reflecting on the tragedy that's befallen the heart family over the years, including Brett's own premature retirement due to a concussion suffered in 1999. It would have been amazing to see Brett's career extend into the new millennium, but despite having his ring career cut down in his prime, no one can take away a single ounce of acclaim for the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. From his time as tag team champion with Jim the Anvil Neidhart to his storied singles career, Brett truly was the excellence of execution. 
as we are currently experiencing a big time Dwayne-assance leading into WrestleMania 40 with Hollywood Rock now back and in, in an even bigger Hollywood way because he actually has two decades of hit movies instead of just one, let's celebrate the jabroni beaten, pie eaten, high flying, electrifying people's champ. The Rock was a ton of fun in the ring and while maybe not a master of the mat classic, he's still given us some truly memorable showdowns with Triple H, Undertaker, Jericho, Hogan and Cena. But Rocky's best asset and the number one weapon in his arsenal is his ability to entertain his millions and millions of fans on the mic. Once Rock steps through those ropes and grabs the microphone, you know you're in for a legitimate, hilarious, instantly quotable treat. The Rock has charisma to spare, so much so that it not only made him the biggest star in wrestling, but also in Tinseltown. He only wrestled regularly for eight years. Like Steve Austin and Indiana Jones, it wasn't the years, it was the mileage. Look at your son, Mama Rosa. It didn't have to be this way, but now this is the only way. Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels created art in that ring. He was a gifted performer who, in an era that was transitioning from six foot eight superheroes to smaller, faster dudes, took wrestling to athletic heights never imagined. And it was almost all over for Michaels in 1998, much like it was for his 90s nemesis, Bret Hart, in 1999, when he retired due to two herniated, one crushed disc in his back. But HBK returned to the ring five years later and faced Triple H at SummerSlam, having not missed a single step. No one sold agony, heartache, or triumph in between those ropes like HBK. Michaels raised the bar for the entire industry with each match. And only Michaels could warrant monikers like the Showstopper, the Headliner, and Mr. WrestleMania. He helped create both the ladder match and Hell in a Cell, while also forming the legendary Degeneration X. And today, he works at BFF Triple H's side, having taken over the reins of NXT, a career genius in the ring, HBK will always be at the top of the bill. Easily deemed the best gimmick in all of pro wrestling, past, present, and future, The Undertaker was a perfect storm for the business. A sensation like no other. From his debut at Survivor Series 1990, to his long string of battles with fellow 90s monsters, to his WrestleMania streak and unparalleled matches against HBK, Edge, Batista, and Triple H, Undertaker's mere presence has always made Jaws drop. Whether it was his spectacularly chilling and methodical entrance to his astonishing cruiserweight style moves, he's 6'10", by the way, no one put on a show like Taker. He'll forever be one of the most respected wrestlers and characters in the business, treated with actual reverence. Finally retired now after 30 years, Undertaker has delivered some of the most entertaining and dramatic matches of all time. Let's travel back to the time of beer baths, middle fingers, and mayhem. It could have been all over for Stone Cold Steve Austin in 1997 after a career-busting neck injury, but, and this is definitely hell yeah worthy, the Texas Rattlesnake would go on from there to become the most popular and profitable wrestler in WWE history. Even with or partially due to an altered wrestling style, Stone Cold shot to the moon. Austin went from technician to tornado, from grappler to ass whipper. And his feud with Vince McMahon put WWE Raw back on top after losing to WCW's Nitro in the ratings for almost two years. WWF had Austin as a violent agent of chaos, fighting for the little guy, raging against his boss and insurmountable odds in order to put authority in its place. Like The Rock, Austin's wrestling career wasn't a long one, but Stars that burn half as long tend to burn twice as bright. Austin was such an unapologetically malicious wildcard that the late 90s anti-hero loving fanbase began cheering him over Bret Hart, leading to complete role reversals. From there on out, it was stone cold stunners for everyone. Vince, Shane, The Rock, announcers, referees, Foley, Foley's favorite home invader, Santa. When you heard the glass break, you knew a beatdown was imminent, even when Austin returned for one final match at WrestleMania 38. I'm not done. I actually have a whole lot more to... What did you think of this top 25? Sure, this is all based on your collective votes, but what do you think? Yeah, you. What do you think? Let us know in the comments down below. Any other wrestling stuff you want to hear about, just stay right here on IGN. We'll talk about more of it, I'm sure.